Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. FAA promotes drone stats at FAA UAS Symposium. Canadian drone pilots raise concerns about new regs. FAI signs agreement with Freedom Drone Sports. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The major players in the commercial drone world recently gathered at the Reston Hyatt near Washington, D.C for the most recent FAA UAS Symposium, an event undertaken by the FAA and their partner, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. AMA's President Rich Hansen was there, as well as the Aero News AMA Drone Report crew, who also produces the Airborne Unmanned Program for AUVSI. In remarks made to the massive assemblage of drone community members and in a one-on-one -on -one interview with ANN, FAA Administrator Michael Huerta noted that the drone registry now counts 770,000 vehicle registrations and over 37,000 drone pilots. This adds some 100,000 drone registrations since we last talked to Administrator Huerta at January's Consumer Electronics Show. Among other issues discussed at the FAA UAS Symposium was the FAA's call for industry study of a drone ID system requested by law enforcement and security officials, as well as the system by which authorizations and waivers were granted, albeit slowly. Of note was one of the early segments of the administrator's presentation in which he praised the progress made thus far in allowing the safe commercial use of small unmanned systems, but also opined that, quote, this was the easy stuff. As we move towards integration, the questions we need to answer are getting more and more complicated. Excerpts from our interview with Administrator Huerta and his staff dealing with preemption, UAS funding, and a number of other issues will be published shortly. In the next round minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Even as the FAA was requesting industry participation in the concept, DJI proposed an electronic ID framework for UAS that would allow U.S. authorities to identify drone owners when necessary while also respecting their privacy. Quote, DJI understands that accountability is a key part of responsible drone use, and we have outlined a proposal that balances the privacy of drone operators with the legitimate concerns authorities have about some drone operations, said Brendan Shulman, DJI Vice President of Policy and Legal Affairs. Your future drone may have a single blade prop. The latest innovation to come out of Amazon's Prime Air delivery program is a single blade rotor for delivery drones, for which the company has received a patent. According to a patent document, the single blade rotors would require less energy to turn and could also save power by shutting down during cruise. While attending AMA Expo West some weeks ago, ANN wanted to get a feel for what it would take to turn a drone hobby into a career. Dart Drones' Bob West, a flight instructor for Dart Drones, noted that drone training, especially on the commercial level, is far more than reading a manual, charging the batteries, and launching. Uh, the commercial businesses go in leaps and bounds. In fact, probably half of the people that sign up for our flight training programs, it's either they're just getting started flying a drone and they want to get some experience with it, make sure that they fly safely, and the other group is looking at making a commercial business out of it. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Wind Transport Canada announced strict regulations for non-commercial drone operators March 16th, many hobbyists began to wonder if it's even worth having the aircraft. The Canadian regulations prohibit flight within about 250 feet of any building, above about 300 feet, or five miles of anywhere an airplane or helicopter might take off or land. In major cities that puts most large parks, beaches, and even open fields off limits for hobbyists to fly their drones. Now, a number of drone advocates believe that Canada's draconian regulations are making U.S. hobby drone pilots nervous. Transport Canada says that hobby drone operators can apply for a special flight operations certificate or join the Model Aeronautics Association of Canada. 
Flying fields sanctioned by MAC are exempt from some of the regulations. Membership in most clubs is about 80 Canadian dollars per year, which includes insurance. According to media reports, MAC is fine with the new rules. Association President Roger Williams said that safety is the top priority. Quote, if these guys' noses are out of joint because they don't feel that they come under the umbrella of safety, then I guess it's just too bad, he said. Many in the drone industry, not surprisingly, have taken a different view. More info to follow. The FAI and Freedom Drone Sports have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, signaling a new step in development of drone racing. The two organizations have committed to working together to help develop drone racing in a responsible and safe way. That includes licensing pilots, developing rules of racing, certification of drones, track design, social responsibility, gender equality, and accredited training of all parties, including officials. Quote, I am very happy to welcome our new collaboration with Freedom Drone Sports, said Fritz Brink, president of the FAI. Drone racing is a fast-developing new air sport discipline, and the FAI is very pleased to be working together with new partners in this way. I look forward to seeing the first races and competitions and watching the sport develop. The FAI is responsible for sanctioning air sports competitions internationally. As part of the memorandum, the FAI will undertake necessary actions to recognize Freedom Class Giant Drone Sports. Freedom Drone Sports will help to develop a structured environment while the FAI will sanction competitions in the new class. Both will focus on ultimately developing an FAI-sanctioned World Championship Series including the presence of Freedom Drone Sports at the first FAI International Drone Conference and Expo, the first through the third of September 2017. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.